let me stress it again, an interface has no mass, so it can feel no net force. Because if it did, the acceleration would be infinite, <coughs> according to Newton's second law. Right? Because if mass goes to zero, for a finite force, acceleration would have to go to infinity. And we don't want to do that. So <coughs> to start visualizing and thinking about this force, we want to think back to when we're driving a wave with our hand by holding the end. And let's think about the initial phase where you're pulling up. So the string, um, uh, the edge of the string might look like that. Here's a cross section of the edge of the string. And you're pulling up with your hand. So that is F drive, like that. And the string is going to be pulled up. So it's going to curve down like that. So the tension will be like that. And we need the sum of the forces at this interface to be zero. We need there to be no force at the interface. So the one, so you can break the tension into a component this way and down. So it's really this downward component of the tension that matters. And that's basically T times the slope, the total tension times dy dx. If you want, you can go back to when we drive the wave on the string arguments and we said, well, there's T, sine theta is the vertical component. Well, for small angles, sine theta is also sine over cosine, and it's also tangent, tangent's the slope, etc. So you can go back and think about that if you want, that for small angles, this is T dy dx. Or you can just say, we want the y change. Well, it's the total times the slope. You know, this is like the slope, and times the slope is the y part. So T slope times dy dx. So we have this force up. And in this physical situation, you can see how they're going to balance each other. But we can just write it generally and say they have to sum to 0. F drive plus T dy dx have to be 0. We don't want to presuppose what direction anything is going. We just want to say that sum has to be 0. So what that would tell us is that F drive is always going to be equal to minus T dy dx. They're always going to be in opposite directions. And that makes sense. If I push the string or I pull the string this way to make a wave, of course it's going to resist that motion. It's not going to push in the same direction. And this resistance is why I have to do work to launch a wave. And it's why waves are energy propagating uh, through a medium. So we have that the drive is ty dx, uh, but we're never happy. But that is spatial. We don't want it spatial, we want it temporal. Right? We want to think about what force to have to apply as a function of time, not force, what force to have to apply as a wave moves away or something. We, we, want, we want it in terms of time. So we use our little rules that F drive could also be written minus T dy dx minus Vt because we're launching a traveling wave. So we know it'll be some function of x minus Vt dx minus vt um, dx. Right. Just like when we were talking about the traveling wave solution. And this is equal to 1. So we know we have that the tension is also equal to minus dy dx minus vt. But we want it in terms of time, so we can do another one. We can say this is equal to minus t dy. This is dy dt d, um, oh no, I'm sorry, dy dt dt dx minus vt. You can do it upside down like this, right? That's allowed. And then uh, this is equal to what? This is equal to, well, if we turned it over, it would be minus v. So this must be equal to uh, minus 1 over the velocity in the medium. So we put all that together and we get F drive and the two minuses uh, make a plus and it's tension times one over velocity times dy dt. That's the force it takes to launch a wave. Now I want to be real clear about something. There's two velocities in this formula. This is the velocity of waves moving down the string. This would be the phase velocity if you had the sinusoid. This 
is the y velocity of a single piece of string or an interface. Right, so this is wave velocity, and this is transverse. And you can see that because y is a function of time, is just the y position of the chunk of string, and if you take the derivative, it's just, it's just the speed. So keep those in mind. Now one of these we're going to do a substitution because we know that the velocity is the square root of tension over the mass density. So if we were to put square root of mu over square root of t, and then this tension could cancel that square root of t, we get that it's equal to the square root of the tension times the mass density times the transverse velocity dy dt. This is the force it takes to drive motion in a string if you're holding on to the end. Or you could also realize this is the force that occurs at an interface as a, str as a wave moves through a string. Either an interface of the same string or, or an interface between two. We'll get into that in a minute. But this is the basic equation. The, for the force that it takes depends just on properties of the string and how fast you're trying to move the string.